Recently, the new hero Iliari was released in Overwatch 2, and she was broken as hell. She could out your DPS and even had an automatic healing turret to boot. She even already got nerfed after just a few weeks. But this isn't the first time, not even close. But they found it near impossible to balance their game. But it isn't just Overwatch. This is an issue which has plagued game devs for decades and isn't stopping anytime soon. So, before we dive deeper into this issue, we need to understand the basics. Games have many different characters or weapons for the player to use, but when which these relate to each other is very important. In other words, you don't usually want one character or weapon to be vastly better than another, especially in a PvP game like Overwatch. Deciding on the specific stats and functions of these heroes and weapons, and how they compare to the others in that game is what's considered balancing. Generally, if a game is well balanced, it means that everything in the game is of a similar power level, so having possibly vastly different abilities or functions. Already you may be able to understand how that can be difficult, but in reality it's even more complicated than that, as good balancing can also be achieved in other ways depending on the type of game, as I'll discuss later. But in order to truly understand the issue of balancing, we need to go all the way back to when PvP games first began. In 1958, the physicist William Higginbotham created the first ever multiplayer video game, Tennis for Two. However, at this point in time, not only was balancing it irrelevant due to the sheer difficulty of creating games, I meaning with people only focus on actually being able to create them in the first place, but such simple games also didn't even require any sort of balancing. In Tennis for Two, the game was exactly the same for both players, and so there was no need to balance it anyways. Well then, why did I bring this up? To show that balancing is an issue we imposed upon ourselves through our will for more complex games. Of course, a game like Overwatch with 37 different characters will struggle with making them even in power, but when both players can only do the exact same thing as each other, balancing isn't even a thing one needs to consider. So, what kind of problems have we created? Pretty much every single online combat based game nowadays faces difficulties in balancing, but which is a great example of this, with Iliari being overpowered, whereas the previous hero life pool was significantly weaker than expected. And let's not forget about that year long meta created by a single character. However, other games also have plenty to show. Apex Legends, for example, has Sia and Crypto, two legends with similar roles yet vastly different power levels. Balancing extends past just characters into weapons as well. In that very same game, the developers are in a constant battle, trying to reduce the power of an SMG here or buff a shotgun there. In the end, they can never quite get it right, as mess revolving around a few weapons and characters always develop, leaving others to fall to the wayside. It seems near impossible for the devs of any such game to truly achieve perfect balance. So, what could possibly make this such a difficult issue to combat? Well, honestly, you can't really pin this problem onto one single thing. Instead, it's caused by a wide variety of things that one must consider when trying to balance a game. It's not just as simple as one weapon being better than another, and so you nerf it so that it becomes similar. You need to consider its relation to every other weapon in the game. And if a game has 30 plus different guns to choose from, it immediately becomes very difficult just to compare one weapon's power to everything else. But even then, it becomes harder, as that is just the first level of this complex issue. Well, now that you know just how good your chosen weapon is, you realize that it's underpowered. The most obvious answer to this is to buff its raw stats like damage or fire rate. Damage is the easier of the two, but even then you need to think about both its new possible damage per second as well as its damage per mag. Increasing the fire rate of a gun is even more difficult, as it can change the feel of a gun entirely. It may increase the damage output, but it means you run out of ammo faster and the recoil's increased, making it more difficult to use. You have to buff its damage significantly, and now it has the exact same DPS as another gun. Yet, suddenly, your weapon has become the strongest one in the entire game. What happened? Shooting games like these tend to have several different weapon classes, with different guns having different functions outside of just their pure damage output. You realize that you took an LMG with a 50 round mag and gave it the same DPS as an SMG with a mere 17 bullets. But that obviously doesn't work. SMGs use their higher damage to try and burst out enemies quickly before having to reload, whereas LMGs have a lot of bullets for sustained fire. Okay, enough of this analogy. What I'm trying to say is that different heroes or weapons can have different mechanics, making them even more difficult to keep in line. Of course the Soldier 76 should be at Mercy in a 1v1, but that's because Mercy isn't supposed to take 1v1s, and so you must balance each hero individually according to their role in the game. But that sadly isn't the end of it. If that was all one had to consider, surely someone would crack the code eventually, but it really isn't. In fact, there are still several more pieces to this puzzle, one of which being the disparity between high and low skill characters and weapons. Let's take Overwatch's Wrecking Ball as an example. Now, Bolt is extremely difficult to play, and so isn't very popular among the general player base, but pick rate only just over 1%. In the hands of most players, he isn't very good at all, so you may think that he needs a buff. However, due to his very high skill ceiling, Ball can find value if you know how to properly utilize him. He's even used at the very highest levels of play in the Overwatch League. So, if you buffed him, 
experts over here would begin to run rampant, whilst he would still remain mediocre at best among the general community. This makes balancing such heroes very difficult, and the same can be said about beginner friendly heroes like Tolwa Bastion, they are powerful at lower skill levels but tend to fall off among more experienced players. This even applies to guns as well, like how beginners may prefer the alternator in an Apex, whereas any experienced player would agree that multiple other SMGs are superior. So, if these characters and weapons are so difficult to balance, what make them in the first place? Well, I believe there to be three main reasons. Firstly, it's very hard to make heroes who are of the exact same difficulty to play. Two, if you did do that, there's a high risk that they become very similar, which can make the game boring. And finally, the game kind of needs that difference in hero difficulty. If nobody was beginner friendly, then new players may get too frustrated and quit the game. But if nobody was difficult, it might make the game boring for those who are very good, or want a challenge to master. In the end, this disparity becomes necessary, but it does make balancing even more problematic. Okay, so we still have a few more issues to cover, but first I'd recommend you to subscribe if you're enjoying so far. It not only helps me out, but it means that you'll be notified about future exciting videos as well. Now, I could continue to properly explain several more issues when it comes to balancing, but I think you get the point, so I'll summarise the rest. Initial map dependent heroes with a very specific purpose and need to be balanced differently from more versatile ones. Weapons or heroes that are annoying by design can't be meta or else nobody will enjoy the game, except for a few select players. There's a large difference between the casual and competitive sides to a game, and so it can be difficult to balance it so that both sides are happy. And in a game like Apex, things as small as guns, iron sights, or equipable attachments even contribute to its power. All of these things go into this huge balancing conundrum, but what if you do actually manage to get things right? What if you somehow manage to perfectly balance your game? Mission accomplished, right? Wrong. It doesn't end there. Live service games like Overwatch rely on their steady supply of new content to keep people engaged, and balance changes are a part of that. Even though people are afraid of change, it's necessary as otherwise they get bored and the game becomes stale. Even if you stop making balance changes and instead rely on releasing new heroes or game modes as your source of content, this then inadvertently affects the game's balance. When a new hero is released, you don't only need to try and perfectly balance them, but you'll also likely affect the power of other heroes who they counter or synergize well with. In reality, game art is simply a never-ending cycle, making changes to the game to try and keep the playbase happy, or at least engage, but never truly succeeding as you can't please everyone. And all of this only applies to some games. Different types of games will need to consider balancing differently depending on the type of game and what the devs want to achieve. An RPG, for example, has to balance gear and characters based on where you are at in the game and has to control the rate of progression. So, now you know all of these complex issues that you have to consider when balancing a game, but there's still one thing that I haven't yet discussed. Balancing for sales. This is when the devs in a game specifically make something more powerful so that you can sell it or cosmetics for it. This has happened before in a game like Apex, where characters are often buffed right before receiving their heirloom, thereby encouraging more people to play them and thereby increasing sales. This is often looked down upon by people, and rightfully so, as a new cosmetic shouldn't be disrupting a game's balance. However, it isn't always terrible, as sometimes it is simply encouragement for the developers to buff a currently weak character, which is often a good thing. As time has passed, companies have strived to make more exciting complex games for us to play. This, however, continues to make balancing such games even more difficult, so I doubt we will get a perfectly game which stays that way anytime soon. In reality, you can never please everyone, and that is just another part of the problem. Hopefully, people can begin to accept the hard work of game devs and possibly suggest helpful improvements without toxicity, so that we can start solving this problem step by step. Because in reality, the biggest issue when it comes to balancing isn't the balance itself, but the constant backlash from fans no matter what the devs do. And so, the best way to solve this problem is to first accept the difficulty in solving it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, it truly is a complex issue and I couldn't quite get into everything here, so if there's anything you think I missed, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy this new style of deeper analysis in my videos, make sure to drop a like so I know to keep making more. I'll see you next time.